All right, folks, so today's a bit of a special edition, late edition of the Daily Space Weather. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, there is some missing data. We'll get into it in just a moment. But first, some current solar imagery from El Taide, Spain. So we can see filaments both in the north and southern hemisphere, kind of in the earthly zone here. Down here you can see some obvious filaments as well as up here. Great example of some filaments there. Some active regions showing up on the El Taide Observatory, and you can also see sunspot 2832. I forget the number. Anyway, there is still a sunspot up there, apparently, or somewhat of an active region. And if you're wondering where the SDO and SOHO imagery are, it's because the SDO's website is down for maintenance for like two days. So that's why we're showing you the El Taide, Spain, ground-based solar observatory from the National Sunspot Observatory instead of SDO and SOHO imagery. One thing we do fortunately have available, though, is the alternative Helio Viewer site. So here is some solar imagery for you. Anyway, we're going to mainly show data today, but uh, you could, it's a perfect opportunity to read up on some stuff you may not be aware of. So one of the things you can look up is the Wilcox Solar Observatory. And if you click on their Solar Center link, it'll send you to this page here. And there's a bunch of different stuff that you can check out on there. And uh, ways to get involved in various aspects of what's going on in space weather and so on. So perhaps check that out. And so here's a little bit of a, an idea of what's going on as far as data loss. We've got the SDO sites are down. Also, the integrated space weather analysis site is down. Uh, so there is, a, there is a bit of a lack of data going on. I'll just say that. Here's a diagram of the solar system. We show it daily. There's where things will be in a week. Next, we like to bring up a star chart. And we've got a bit of a pileup happening there in the eastern ecliptic from my location. We've got the moon, the Venus, the sun, and the Mercury all up there at the same time as Jupiter and Saturn are setting. So lots of planets in the sky right now. Uh, and again, the SDO site's going to be down, I think, through tomorrow also. But don't be surprised if it gets repaired early. Engineers love to overestimate how long a project will take and then impress the heck out of you by getting done massively early. I can certainly assure you that the sun is shining, though, and the radio flux is at 77. It's light at my window. So there's the one-year chart of the radio flux. It looks like it's been recently updated. The data looked a little old yesterday, but in any case, it's currently at 77 solar flux units. I just checked. So the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard is still up. It looks like they're showing... The LASCO should be visible, so... And looking at very old data there from the LASCO. This is pretty new data. There you go. There's some data from the GOES-16. 195 angstroms. Far UV spectrum. There is an active region rising in the northeast. What's going on with seismicity? Looks like no major quakes over the past 24. Here we are on VolcanoDiscovery.com's sort by magnitude and you're actually seeing the background of what I usually do most days so no five magnitude quakes here looks like a lull in earthquakes let's check USGS and I'll just scroll up the list here so there was a deep quake at Fiji that was a 4.1 magnitude at 562 kilometers Philippines saw a 4.6 at depth, 105 kilometers at the 4.6 magnitude quake at the Philippines. Taiwan saw a 4.9. Please leave a comment if you think it's a country or uh, 
part of Ched. Ched. There indeed was a 5.1 at Chile over the past 24. Perhaps it got downgraded. I have no idea. But for some reason, it did not show up on VolcanoDiscovery.com's list. Who knows what shows up on what list and why. A series of California quakes here. as well as a 4.0 in the Caribbean. What is up with that in California? Ah, there was a 4.1. Oh, those look, it looks like they were four shocks, folks. Check it out. A bunch of four shocks. And then a 4.3 at Nyland, California. I'll zoom in on the other map there, too. Oh, right at the edge of the Salton Sea once again. So that's the second quake in that zone. Perhaps some foreshocks to a larger earthquake scenario. And let's zoom in on the region here. To see all the quakes in the past 24 in that zone. It looks like there are quite a few, all in a very concentrated place within the Salton Sea. There you go. There's a location of that earthquake swarm. Nyland, California. We'll zoom back out and get back to the list. And we're going to speed things up a little bit, so there also was a 4.1 there. There's that Caribbean quake, a 4.0 there, a 4.6 at Chile at depth. And we saw a 5.0 in Venezuela. Myanmar saw a 4.9 and a 5.0 in Indonesia. This is an odd one here. This Venezuelan quake. It's, it is on a plate boundary between the Caribbean and South American plate, though. Anyway, there's the location of that one. Near this interesting harbor, which I'm sure is a delightful place to visit, but I wouldn't necessarily want to live there. It's in Venezuela. I'm wondering what volcanoes are, are erupting. Are you thinking of pole vaulting them? Please don't pole vault them. More on that in a minute. Putting more on in the more on that in a minute. Mount Abiko is producing a 10,000 foot ash plume. Suenose Jima. Unknown ash plume. Please don't hang glide over the caldera. Popocatapetl has dispersed it's volcanic ash in central Mexico. Fuego dispersed its ash as well in Guatemala. Sangue exploding 20,000 foot ash plume in Ecuador. Sabancaya in Peru also exploding 24,000 foot ash plume there. And Nevados de Chilean in central Chile. Explosive activity sighted and continuous ash emissions producing a 14,000 foot plume of ash. A 14,000 foot plume of ash are a reminder. To not pole vault the caldera. As it could be unsafe. Which is why on our channel we don't offer ridiculous platitudes about being safe. We give you actual advice. Such as not pole vaulting the caldera. So pick up some merch with this theme on it. And the quality is quite high. To provide public service messages to all of your dumbest inhabitants of your town, for example... Tell them not to pole vault the caldera. Perhaps they're more likely than you, our viewer. I don't know. Maybe give them the URL of our channel or smashamash.com. They'll be advised to not pole vault the caldera. Here's the x-ray flux over the past three days as measured by the GO-16. No major solar flares. Remember, folks, solar flares are photons. Coronal mass ejections are mostly protons. Here's the proton flux. And we don't see any significant changes in the proton flux in the past 24 hours. Goes magnetometer showing some pretty sawtooth patterns here as we are approaching another heliospheric current sheet polarity crossing. Why did the proton cross the current sheet? To get to the other polarity, folks. To get to the other polarity. Here is the current sheet. 
and there is a North Pole current sheet approaching. Although it is taking its good old time and the fact that we see activity in the Northern Hemisphere rising, it's going to delay the onset of that North Pole current sheet. So it hasn't even arrived at stereo A yet. Let's take a look at the line of sight magnetogram, three-dimensional ecliptic plane field plot version. Anyway, that's a view of the same data essentially derived from ground-based magnetometers and magnetometers on stereo A and stereo B. Stereo B's magnetometer still works, folks. Next, looking at the line of sight coronal hole plot. And you can see this series of South Pole oriented coronal holes rotating in. I can expect them to provide a pretty significant solar wind, probably something like a minor geomagnetic storm if I had to guess, which I don't. Again, the Integrated Space Weather Analysis Center is down, so we can't show you the detected filaments and sunspot groups. Continuing on, KP index of measurement of global geomagnetism just came out of geomagnetic unrest. And that was a result of a quick spike in the solar wind speed and density. Here's the 24-hour chart of the real-time solar wind. And that was caused by this little minor spike right here. Also, the BTBZ did shift into negative territory twice. So that KP4 happened in the first six hours. So right there, when the when the speed jumped up, this minor speed increase, speed went only from 333 to about 349 kilometers per second, actually up to about 360. So just a small increase in the speed there. There was also a small increase in the density and an increase in the temperature of the solar wind at that moment. Anyway, current conditions when we made the video were 13 protons per cubic centimeter density, 351 kilometers a second speed. Next, here's a geospace magnetosphere movie, uh, four hours of data. Everything looking pretty normal here. Fairly homogeneous and high pressure, at least beyond 1.5 nanopascals, the scale shown on this data. You're looking at about 12 Earth diameters there, four hours of data courtesy University of Michigan. A little bit of density increase, but nothing major going on. Next, ground magnetic perturbations. And these are changes going on in Earth's own B field. And we're seeing some oddities once again here, some pulses coming out of the uh, Pacific Ocean. as well as some ground magnetic perturbations here near the north geomagnetic pole. Actually, some near the net pole. Anyway, the net pole, if you're, if you're down here, right, the net pole is someplace in this area. But if you start to go this way, your compass needle will eventually point toward the Canadian North Pole. And if you go this way, it'll eventually point toward the Siberian North Pole. The South Pole is somewhere down here in the Southern Indian Ocean, south of Australia. So we show this data daily. Not necessarily to disprove certain YouTube channels who have no idea what they're talking about, but it helps. If you should want to do such a thing. By the way, thanks for viewing the content on YouTube. If you're a new viewer, Check out smashamash.org presents the sun part 16. And don't forget to press subscribe as our thumbnails even contain information. And also don't forget to check out the playlists. There's all kinds of content on there you may not be aware of in genres besides science and technology. We're also on BitChute, by the way. We released a climate change video this morning. It's climate change slash meteorology, since the planet's so hot that it's cold. Also, we've started up a new series, the weekly Wednesday afternoon smash streams. So check those out. 
leave us a chat. Let us know what you'd like us to talk about as we may be in the process of shifting subjects when you chime in. Also, check out smashomash.com for our Red Bubble shop, which you can click on Smash O Merch. You'll be redirected. Everything's on sale. We took a hit on the profit margins for the entire month of June. So come July 1st, prices will go up significantly. Uh, so get your gear during June so you can rock it throughout the summer. The quality is high. And today I'm sporting the Google Bias t-shirt. This one is in red. And here I'll give you a look at it. Usage. I Googled it, and now I know less about it. All right, continuing on. Today's cosmology segment will be a separate video. And did you see yesterday's cosmology segment? It's got fascinating stuff about Milky Way galaxy globular clusters and some actual cosmology about the Milky Way galaxy. In yesterday's cosmology segment, you can find it all at youtube.com slash smash mash slash playlists. And here comes some more data about things like charging hazards for satellites, and we don't see any. That's the word on the street. Here's the one-year chart of the electron flux, which is typically responsible for charging up satellites. And here's a three-day chart. We're seeing low to moderate levels here. And once again, I would disagree here and think that we're going to see an increase in the electron flux. At least in the next day or so, we should see a significant increase in the electron flux, similar to this. That's just the way it works, and I'm not going to explain the cosmology of it at this moment. It's the daily space weather. So here's the total electron content forecast. You're looking at the entire air column in terms of electron density here. Don't be dense. Know what the electron density is. So this is the whole air column all the way up from a, where a GPS satellite would be in its geosynchronous or, or, uh, orbit down to your handset. And this is quite accurate, as I've seen electron anomalies over me produce insane errors. And here's a diagram of sort of what you were just looking at. Next, the F ionosphere layer. Here's an animation of that. And we're seeing a highly discharged ionosphere here on the dark side of the planet. So those big red areas, those are uh, where the vibrational frequency is all the way down to one megahertz there, where it's just an F layer. It's not a multi-layer ionosphere as double layers get created as a result of incoming solar radiation and so on. Anyway, that's what's going on in the ionosphere. It's, it's a little bit anomalous here on the dark side, especially the sun side, a little bit more normal. Here's the latest image coming in at 1145 universal time. And here's a diagram with things like layers and altitudes and radiation penetration. We did do a meteorology segment earlier. If you didn't check that out, please do. If you haven't become a patron yet, please do. Patreon.com slash smashamash. Help us to increase the size and scope of our operations by becoming a patron. It helps us out greatly. It gives us some idea and incentive of whether or not these videos should continue to exist. Patreon.com slash smashamash. You can thank our patrons as well for these videos to exist. Cheers. Thanks, patrons. And here's some stuff that we've literally never showed on the channel before. So this is an example of the thematic map from the GOES-16 <laughs> Extreme UV Imager. Here's some more. My favorite wavelength, 171 angstroms. And here's some 284 angstroms to close things out. Thanks for checking out the Daily Space Weather. And may that solar wind be at your back.